Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today, I'm going to read a quote channeling that addresses attitude and the power of attitude, how to change attitude and how it affects our spiritual journey. Quo is a group of higher density beings that are channeled through LL research that answer spiritual questions. They've been incredibly helpful to me and I find their wisdom very, very resonating. You can find more about Quo at www.llresearch.org. We begin with the channeling delivered on November 15th, 1992. Group question. Today's question has to do with our attitude. We have various attitudes, each of us, that help us or cause us to look at situations in a certain way. We would like to know a number of things about attitude. First of all, does the attitude that we have have a direct relationship to the lessons that we wish to learn? If we wish to affect our attitude in order to change the way we experience our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, is this something that is worthwhile doing? If so, how can we affect our attitude in a way that is meaningful rather than in the usual judging ourselves by how much we do, what we do, or how well we do it? The accomplishment factor, and just in general, what part does attitude play in the way we learn our lessons and live our lives? Carla Channeling We are Quo. Greetings to you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. What a blessing it is to be with you this day and to share in the creations of each of you, for each of you possesses and is a complete creation. That which you have within you is continuous with and equal with and not separate from all that there is. Yet as long as you have a personhood, your creation has a subjective component. We salute and celebrate the subjective components of each universe here. For within your creations, the mystery of faith and faith in the mystery is central, and each of you seeks truly. We feel so privileged to dwell in this meditative state with the energies of this group and are very happy to speak on the subject of attitudes with the disclaimer that as always, we wish each to know that we are fallible. We can and do make mistakes. Therefore, use the discrimination within your own subjective universe for you and you alone are responsible for that creation, which is a co-creation with the one infinite father of all that there is. You create in fine company, as do we. We are speaking, we perceive to those who have approached the living of the workaday life with vigor, energy, and willingness to work. The basic positive attitude serves you well, yet the attitude of those who work needs adjustment as the daily routine varies according to the individual needs of each person and the changing time allotments available for your work as the subjective river of time moves with you. Were we speaking to those who truly wish not to work, we would have to begin elsewhere. But the basic attitude with each has is productive of positive polarizing. However, this potential for the good can and does, if not watched, turn and become that which creates confusion and depolarizing effects. However, we wish each of you to see your basic energy here. Let us pause a moment while we feel within yourself this positive enjoyment of what you would call work for the good. We see each of you lighting up, shall we say, from thoughts of enjoyable labor which is of service or bears a productive fruit, which then can be used for service, be it a financial aid gained by earning money or free time which can be used like the money. This is the essential attitude for those who expect to learn positive lessons through the use of daily work. It is efficient to have this positive attitude. It is productive, and by itself, it does not have the kind of contact with the deeper roots of mind that enable this basic attitude to be more informed. As you walk about, as you do your duties, as you spend your time, where does the attitude come from? How is it that one can move within the being in such a way to affect the attitude? Firstly, we suggest that the seeker, when thinking about attitude, realize firstly that the attitude on the outer level is a simple vision created by complex movements of data called a from the roots of the mind. 
This calling up is done often subconsciously to the great extent to the extent that a person wishes quick changes in attitude. For deep changes, there will be a frustration. We feel you are hoping that we can tell you a way to change attitudes, that is, spontaneous attitudes quickly. However, this is not usually swift in its processing. The seeker who wishes to move quickly often will seize upon the quest and attempt to change the programming, to change the thinking in the direction considered helpful or appropriate for one polarizing in a positive way. However, the opposite is true. The one who fears and worries will grow closer and closer to the difficulty that is being perceived. The person who is not fearing does not hold on to the circumstance or piece of thought or programming which is or is not causing fear. Can you see how the tendency to focus on a problem simply moves you closer and closer to a surety that there is indeed a problem? The faith and will grow smaller and the problem or difficulty grows larger. The seeker ends up feeling helpless and discontent. The fearless entity moves along and turns the attention to each thing before it accepting it. Now there are many things about third density entities that predictably will not sit well. The Catholic or universal nature of humankind promises a lifetime of introspection followed by some disgust, revulsion or horror. For all possible traits of personality are potentially there in every being within the human family. The tendency then is to attempt to think positively and emphasize the positive. This is taking the basic attitude of I am living, I am glad to take action, and adding some supporting structure for the emotions that is in thinking positively about each task one accepts and blesses the task. However, an entity may go a lifetime attempting through this method to improve an attitude or widen its outlook and not find itself satisfied. The deepest influence upon attitude is the willingness to turn from the world picture and pay attention to the mystery, to stop time and space in the mind. And in that stopped moment, worship and adore, praise and offer thanksgiving. Then, in the next moment, turn to the world again. The Creator is seemingly far away. Seemingly, this wondrous mystery has created and then left the universe in which you exist. For all any can prove, this is the case. However, when the heart and emotions from the habit of turning momentarily or for a longer time to the infinite one, to the mystery of unity, there then opens a very, very primary and deep channel within the roots of mind and joy, hope and kindness, flower upward to blossom without fanfare or ado in the forefront of the mind, offering that inner home the sweet smell and freshness that the flowers always do, stopping to remember the Creator is like planting a seed within the self. It flowers and bears fruit in time. Now there needs to be patience. When attempting any spiritual work, we have said often that persistence, regularity in the habit of turning toward the Creator, is the greatest virtue, the most effective trait. That which each wishes is the experience of a loving, giving self, how can you find this attitudinal posture and find it to fit the self? We have spoken before about the way females and males affect each other in learning the lessons of love. Consider how those seekers who have lacks perceived and find these lacks to make them feel isolated and alone may, by the technique of moving the point of view, find the answer to the question. In other words, if an entity is unhappy because of a lack of companionship or a lack of a right work to do. The focusing upon this is the first thing not to do. But then what can be done to ameliorate the situation while the fairly long process of attitudinal change of praise and thanksgiving that is going on can be effective? We would suggest taking the I want statement and gazing at it as if you were the one hearing this from another. For instance, if one says, I want a companionship, turn this around and you hear a voice saying, I want companionship. Now, where are voices like this one in the surrounding neighborhood or town? What entities are alone that you may find with your presence? 
If there is a lack of supply and the attitude is poor because one feels financially poor, turn this 180 degrees. You are listening to someone who is poor. Where are the poor people in your vicinity and how might you help them? We suggest this reversal when a lack or limitation is perceived. If it is simply thought, it will not be very effective. If, on the other hand, one who perceives a certain lack continuously decides to serve from a feeling of abundance of love within and finds a way to serve those who are alone or those who are very poor, the activity will be coming from a place of plenty where you have forsaken the thought of being alone and instead asked, how may I serve those who are alone? In brief, we may say to control the attitudes is a poor idea. To note them and pay attention to them is an excellent idea. When fear is part of the thought, do not hold that fear unless you need it. Whatever you can look at and accept makes your faith and will larger and the lack or limitation smaller. Then turn the self towards the Creator at every possible moment, simply allowing the momentary burst of praise and thanksgiving to rise. This refreshes in the present and has fruit in the future. And finally, when you do perceive a need, find the way to express abundance as regards that need in service to others. For that which you feel is that which all feel in some way. All are of one family. There are no true strangers. Nothing is alien to you. Allow the self to relax its boundaries of thinking, and this shall sharpen the observational skills. Lastly, we would suggest that if you keep the basic attitude toward action positive and find delight in movement, then move. Do that which feels appropriate to do without worrying over much. Take the rough and tumble of living the everyday life and be rough and tumble with it. Let things be incomplete, imperfect, and unfinished. See and accept all the errors and mistakes of judgment or of any other kind. Just see and accept and go forward. And in the middle of it all, you will find now and then that a threshold has been reached. We would use the example of two of this group both of whom had found a threshold passed within the same 24-hour day. Each entity had decided to accept some very basic things concerning the life pattern. This bore fruit in fearlessness, for what is accepted can be forgiven. The healing of the incarnation is this process of coming to accept life, as it seems at all times, not necessarily the things in the life, but always and everywhere giving thanks and praise, simply because consciousness is either consciousness of something, of nothing, or of everything. We suggest simply that praise and thanksgiving move the mind and heart out of things into the absolute of all that there is. We have found again and again that we speak with this group on one aspect of a central subject, and that is perfecting or attempting to perfect the life experience. We can only say to you that this area of consideration will continue to deepen as the life patterns of each become fuller, not only with experience, but with the vital energy which creates the appetite for more intense or full experiencing. There is only so much space in a life experience, however, that space may be filled with different qualities of light, different qualities of understanding, of compassion, or of wisdom. Thusly, seek not only the obvious or evident improvement of the life behaviors, thoughts, and feelings, but seek in a directionless way to be more and more able to accept a fuller space within. The light within you can transform, and as you allow this quality of light to intensify, so you become as the lighthouse. The light within is not the light of self, but that limitless light which is of the one source and ending of all. Deepen your cup to hold the light in the mystery. We would ask if there are further queries at this time. We move to a channeling delivered on January 3rd, 1993. The question is, how much can we either consciously or subconsciously affect the way we look at the experiences in our daily round of activities, and what can we do to sow seeds of a wider perspective, a lighter perspective? one that takes the broader view and gives us the opportunity to go through our lives with less turmoil, less of the up and down, 
or if this is even advisable. Is it better for us to just work with the way we go up and down? Do people really have an effect upon their attitude? Or is it a figment of our imagination? Carla Channeling I am known to you as Quo. My greetings to you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. We feel our thoughts streaming to meld with yours in a unison of peace and praise. And we are most appreciative of the privilege of sharing the comfort of meditative awareness with this circle of seeking. You ask us this day about the effect that one's attitude has upon one's life, whether it does, how it does, and so forth. To begin to answer that query, we would turn it around and say that the experiences which constitute an incarnation affect one's attitude and are designed to do that. So one cannot begin with a blank slate. In speaking of attitudes, for there are lessons to be learned, catalysts to be experienced and reacted to in the life regardless of which attitude these programs of material or lessons are received. Let's spend a bit of thought upon this before moving forward. You are already aware of so much in the field of metaphysics, having focused upon it intensively. However, sometimes the basic fundamental of a cosmological system such as the one we offer can seem fresh and new because the material has not been dealt with in just this application. Such is the case with the plan which you as co-creators, with the aid of your higher self, set out to experience during this particular incarnation. There was a destiny, shall we call it, of kinds of human experience, that is, experience which can be had by humans or third density creatures. That was the helping of food on the incarnational plate. These lessons of loving were meant only for your own learning and growth. There was not in your minds as you planned these lessons a mischievous or wicked impulse, but only the ambitions of the seeker who wishes to stretch and grow within while offering service in the name of the Infinite One. Consequently, you gave to your future incarnational self a potential for incarnational experience that you yourself felt was the very best possible. Now, we all know how the eyes can be larger than the stomach, how that incarnational plate may have been loaded generously. Nevertheless, it is to be remembered that there is nothing intrinsically mischievous or wicked about the lessons that fly before you in the gale of experience as you experience it. No matter how fierce the winds and storms may seem, they are as you yourself wish them to be in terms of that which was inevitably going to be dealt with as you lived through this incarnational time. When the difficulties seem overwhelming, it is always easier to malign destiny than to buckle down and do the laborious work of digesting the catalyst instead. However, as a beginning to speaking of attitudes, we may say that these attitudes do not address a random life plan of catalytic experiences. Rather, they address the stuff of which lessons are made. The fractional, broken pieces of a whole lesson come bit by bit into the net of your personal energies and are there for a blessing and for learning and growth. This having been said, we ask that you take some of your time when reflecting simply to put your being carefully within the awareness of yourself as an infinite and eternal being who wishes both to serve and to grow in the love of the Infinite One. Into this arena, free will meets destiny and chooses its reaction, comes that called the attitude. An attitude, we may note, is etymologically a word meaning the way of leaning or tending. To take an attitude in the dance, for instance, is to turn the foot and leg sideways while raising it upwards instead of raising it straight. The attitude is the slant which you may put upon the straightforward march of life events. And yes, the attitude one takes does have a great deal to do with how rough the incarnational experience seems as you progress through it. The attitude of those who hunger is that they wish food now. We say this to remind each that the consideration of an attitude is a luxury brought about by having a full stomach, a warm shelter, and comrades in arms as it were. Those simply attempting survival have only the background attitude of desire for life. But most within your culture have the luxury of experimentation with the inward turning of the mind as it meets new situations. We would say to you that that which has ripened within you, 
will come forth as an attitude, and you may feel as if you have consciously done great things, when in fact, the choice of attitude has been a small one in the present, the greater part of the work on that particular lesson being done beforehand so that you could respect and accept the incoming data as recognizable. It is the old lesson unlearned which becomes the new lesson, where the novelty of the experience catches one flat-footed, or with an old and still unlearned lesson, a boredom and a stress which has accompanied past failure causes the attitude to change. So we would look first at new lessons and then at the true culprit which you are after. In new or novel to you lessons of love, the remembrance that you are in tune with your own destiny is often enough of an attitudinal adjustment to allow you to accept and process new material without undue difficulty. However, when you are revisiting old tangles of emotion, you are attempting to let light, air, and warmth into that which is dark, cold, and closed. The very process of accepting the data is painful because it is recognized that this is difficult, that is unlearned material, and there is the feeling of, oh no, here we go again. Look for a moment at the fear, at that turn of thought, and see the dulling, freezing, darkening effect of fear. We do not encourage you to go forward as if you had no fear if your distress is considerable, but would indeed encourage you, if you can do this at any crux, to recognize and accept these older and seemingly more painful lessons, even though they are painful. The barriers put up by fear could seem to be an attitude barrier through which truth simply will not flow. So much of the work of having a positive attitude is clearing away the inevitable irritation that grows upon one at life itself for handing you your own failings as seen by yourself, then asking you with those failings to tackle that which is too hard for you. The first adjustment then is simply to accept difficult material. You may work in another density on accepting it with total and unconditional love. In terms of the choice made in third density for the light, it is well that you focus on the basic choice of saying yes to whatever the incarnation brings. Accepting difficult material is in itself difficult. Simply to accept is excellent work for you as a soul. For in accepting this difficult lesson of love as it manifests to you, you are expressing faith in the nature of this material. Do you see that in order to reject this material, you would have to say to life itself, I do not believe that there is a reason for this suffering, limitation, and loss. I do not believe I am a loved child in my father's care. Now in seeking the Creator, we so often assume that of course we accept that we are children under the one great original Creator's care. However, in the day-to-day -day experience, this seeming unconditional acceptance is refused and ignored by the thoughts of doubting the goodness of destiny which would so bombard you with difficult situations and emotions. Once you have seen this portion of your attitude come into focus, that is a simple and profound faith in the system of learning lessons in your density. Then you may choose wisely how you may approach the sense impressions which make up the daily experience. If all things are good but often unknown, then it is with eager interest and positive hopes that one would take up every new thing that came forward to the sinecure of attention. Yet this remains not so because the nature of one who is cut off from the processes of the deep mind cannot stay consciously at all times in the deep rhythms of existence. The feeling of being lost on the sea of troubles is quite literally cut off from the sea of consciousness in which all that is separate comes into one unified stem or root and is ultimately lost in the mystery of Godhead. So, persistently you shall, even though affirming the goodness of all experience and affirming the goodness of your lessons, come up again and again against the outrageous, unacceptable, painful experiences which, by subtle or bold means, shake your comfort apart and force you to deal not only with the situation but with your own feelings about that situation. You see, you can know that all is well and know that everything is for you to learn but this does not keep the unruly emotions of a deeply sensitive being which has been cut off from the resting place of eternity from feeling many, many painful things and seemingly having to feel them in the darkness of solitude. 
whether it be total solitude or simply the deep loneliness of inner solitude, you cannot expect any attitude whatsoever to buffer you from feeling emotions. This, we feel, is where your query was aimed. We hope that you can see that all we said before stands as the foundation upon which we can talk about having attitudes. Yes, my friends, the practice of a particular bend of attention and way of consideration is a tremendous force in shaping your learning experiences and in performing the service which you came to offer. Part of the work of any wanderer is the living of the life itself, or when that which has been in a more compassionate vibration or wiser one has all of its forces in harmony inwardly, then the breathing in and breathing out of everyday living is in itself the central portion of the service which you came to offer, that service being to enable consciousness within this planetary sphere to be lightened insofar as the eyes of your heart are lightened so is the planetary vibration lightened now as you go forward you may feel that this seems very easy i will just take what comes with good humor however the incarnation will turn around and surprise you as soon as you think thusly again what is important in the creation of an attitude is largely that fundamental way in which you as a servant of the good are ready to deal with destiny. In doing this, you shall again and again find in theory that you are doing well. But what are all these unhappy and turbulent emotions? Why must you suffer? This is where we came in. This is what you asked, and about this we may say that building upon the foundation of faith, which undergirds all of your existence, you may focus upon your emotions, not upon the events causing the emotions, with good results as far as aiding yourself by attitude. If you focus on events, you are lost in meaningless detail. If you focus on your emotions, you see that when you have pain in the emotional body, you resist, tighten up, and say no in a speechless, silent way. Now step back from this knot of negation and see that the work of the attitude is concerned with holding, loving, and forgiving that self that is in a knot of pain. The attitude is not relevant to the facts in the way you meant it. It is relevant to how you deal with the emotions which you feel as you move through this lesson. If you are angry, a good attitude cannot make you angry. However, it can kick in like the afterburner and say, I accept myself as angry as well as calm. In this self-acceptance lies the compassion and love which the lesson was intended to teach. The events themselves do not teach, and one's reactions to the events do not fully teach, but the way one deals with one's unredeemed and lost emotions make a great difference. The attitude can be adjusted by daily silent meditation. This is a good foundation upon which to build each day. However, much of the day is spent in a far more active and less contemplative mode. Within this active mode, there seems little time for the receding of one's consciousness into the center of a life lived in faith. However, one small word is enough to change the attitude, whether it be love, or as this instrument prays often, Jesus, or any other short expression of truth. This is enough to feed the flame of balance within. This, shall we say, balanced fire can pilot one emotionally. The fire is the fire of love. This engine which moves the attitude is fueled by love. And this love comes into the painful emotional reactions and accepts the painful, twisted, knotted self. It also accepts just the same, the times when you are not in pain but feel wonderful. And then the acceptance is that of the fond relative which sees the children playing on the grass on a summer day and glows with the joy of it. You can be pleased with yourself. This is a good attitude. Just let yourself be equally pleased when you are having unlovable and un pretty reactions. Let your compassion flow to yourself. This is the best attitude. There are other ways to affect the attitude besides prayer. A song upon the lips or in the mind always helps. The joking with oneself or with another is almost always helpful. The attempts made to soften another's pain when another comes to you for aid have a profoundly positive effect on you, so that we encourage each to rejoice in the outworking of destiny and to attempt to allow your frame of mind to be that which it must be because of what is happening, so that you are not thrown or dismayed or judgmental with yourself when you stumble and fall. 
Let your attitude be that all is well even as you pick yourself up again and yet again. Dust yourself off as this instrument song goes and start all over again. The crux of having a good attitude is in that moment of recognition and forgiveness of the self by the self. May you rejoice in your destiny and find it within yourself faithfully and persistently to cooperate with it. For as you attempt through having an attitude to do these things, the puzzles you encounter will be simplified to the extent you have ceased judging yourself as you do your lessons. At this time, we have finished with the direct communication to this one query. Are there further queries at this time? Question inaudible. I am quo. We find this sentiment hilarious and wish you the same. Are there any further queries? Thank you very much. And we, my friends, thank you. As you sit in the gently descending early darkness of winter in your pleasant domicile, we find ourselves as always reluctant to let go of this channel, yet we must. Please know, however, that although we have different concepts of time and space, as our illusions are different, yet we are with you in your time and space in a faithful and stable way, a strength for you to call on. We are most happy that you do call upon us, for we can give one thing, and that is our unconditional love. And we do so enjoy being with those who call upon us, not to share information, but just to be able to send the vibrations of love and support that are the other part of our service to you. We may speak to you of many things, but the vibratory connection between us is that carrier wave of love. And this is never away from you simply because we do not have a voice. No words are necessary. Love is experienced in love. We let you now go away from the quiet of meditation and into the world at large for some more helpings of catalytic experience. May your attitude be full of joy and compassion. And always, my friends, good humor. Be merry with each other. We are known to you as the principle of quo. We leave you in the love and in the light of the one infinite and glorious creator in that shining light we say, Adonai, Adonai. So these two powerful channelings really addressed attitude in Quo's classic way. We understand that our attitude affects us. How do we change it? And is there a proper way to go about addressing our attitude? As they say here, you can't really control the attitude, but we can add to our own daily ritual one of thanksgiving and gratitude, which will slowly change the attitude that we have. We understand from Quo's perspective that we're going through life constantly experiencing different things and catalyzing these experiences. These experiences change us. They program us. They activate us. These experiences are the catalyst they're constantly referring to. That's the reason that we're playing this game. That's the reason that we're in this life. So the key is finding a way to be grateful and with a positive attitude, even when there are negative catalysts that come up. And if we can learn this amazing ability, then it changes our perspective and we can understand the lessons that we're learning and process this in a way that avoids some of the negative circumstances of having a negative attitude. And ultimately, we are tuning in to the lessons of love that these catalytic experiences give us. And if we remain the attitude that we are students learning lessons of love, and when something negative comes up, we are aware of that from a larger perspective. We become aware that we are moving through this life, learning these lessons. It changes our attitude so that we're not caught up in the flood of negative emotion that these events can create. We must accept difficult material. We are constantly working to accept with total and unconditional love the conditions of the world around us as reflections of the Creator. And the one reminder they always give us, no matter what is happening, is each moment to tune back to the Creator. Tuning in to the Creator's thought and purpose and intent. And by doing so, our attitude broadens and we have a greater understanding of the experiences that we have in this world. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome.
to the Reality Revolution.